Welcome everybody, good morning. Super exciting to meet you all. My name is Radovan Bast, uh, and I will introduce uh, the co-instructors and organizers in a moment. This is, this is the first time that we do a full workshop online and also first time that we do a workshop of such a size. So it will be exciting in many aspects. I will now uh, take over the screen share here and go through some first through some welcome practical information and then uh, we will start with the material. Here we go. I will adjust the size a little bit to make it more readable. So first of all, to make sure that you know how to find the schedule and all the material that we will visit this week and next week. So this is the this mega code refinery mega because it's we multiplied the number of participants by I don't know five six compared to what we did earlier. Uh, my name is Hadovan. With me teaching, I uh, need to find it here. Uh, will be uh, Anne and Bjorn and Tuo and Stefan. I should also mention uh, that a lot of the coordination and administrative heavy lifting was done by Anawe and Richard. Without that, it would not be possible. And also many helpers. We have many, many helpers. We would like to acknowledge you. So we will reach out to you and ask you whether you would like to be listed here. Because without, without the helpers, a workshop of this size would not be possible. So thanks so much for, for helping us here. We are doing really great with the time. And the plan for today is I will, we will do, we will start with Git and introduce you to Git. And I will do, so I go into this. So following this link over here, you arrive at this material. And what I will do, the plan is I will take you through, I will motivate why do we why Git, why version control, and why do we teach it? And then I will uh, hand the microphone to Stefan, who will take you through the basics, Git staging, undoing. Our plan is to stop today approximately, approximately here before we start branching and merging. Then tomorrow, uh, we will discuss branching, merging, conflict resolution, sharing repositories online and inspecting history. That's the plan for tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we will uh, talk about collaborative Git. So today we, we are in a single person universe Git. So that's the plan for this week. I will now go into the, anything I forgot here. Um, I will go into the motivation part. So here I want to motivate what is Git about, why version control, why, I th why we think everybody should use version control. It doesn't have to be Git, uh, but I think we think that everybody needs version control and why we do, why we teach it and why, why do we spend three half days on, on this topic. So the essence of version control, I try to summarize it in three points and one is that with Git, with version control, we can record a snapshot of the project. It's like, it's like making a full copy of the project and put it in some place. Imagine taking a photo of, of your project. Recording snapshots, but it can do more. We, we will see that we can have branching. We can work on several branches in parallel. And, it, and with this, I can work on several different aspects, features of my project and switch between them. Some, some of them may work out, some of them may not work out, but it will help me to keep things organized. We will also see that once we work with different, with colleagues, we can work on the same code project without interfering. We don't have to wait for each other. 
I can work on my part, my colleague can work on their part, and we don't have to wait until I'm done. We can work in parallel. Also, I can experiment with an idea and I can discard it if it turns out to be a bad idea. So recording snapshots, branching, and there is also merging. We will see that it is relatively easy to, to merge these, these different developments later. Most of the time it will be automatic. And here are the things that we typically like with snapshots. It doesn't have to be only software. So this is how Git, GitHub started, but uh, we can snapshot much more. There can be scripts, documents, manuscripts. It's, it's a great idea to collaborate on a, on a, on a manuscript with, with Git. So you don't have to send these emails and ask, so have you done your changes already? Or where is the latest version? Who will merge these, these developments? And one can do more configuration files, websites, data, or data can be versioned, maybe should be versioned. And to get us started, I will now ask you a question through the HackMD. So this is a, this is a real life example. It, is, it, it has been anonymized. So what it, what it is, this is a code of a, of a friend of mine, but I have redacted the name here. Uh, this is a directory listing. This is some software and then this, this is like a zip file, archives. And then my colleague made snapshots. So in 2007, 18th of March, this snapshot and another snapshot. And then this one was final and this is unfinished. And I'm quite sure that the, we have all seen such kind of version control. So here I write, what happens if you don't use version control? Well, it is some sort of version control. I make a zip file of everything and I put it in some place. But my question to you is, uh, and I will copy that to, over to the hack and the, what kind of problems do you anticipate when you see some, this kind of version control? Questions to the audience here. Oh, somebody's typing for me, thanks. So what we'd like to hear I will also tell you what I think about what problems I anticipate, but what here you can write, what kind of problems do you see when, uh, when you see a version control done like that? This happens very often with manuscripts, but also sometimes with software. It's still better than nothing, because at least I have some, something to refer to. The table final I gave to, to a colleague of mine, then the colleague continues implement something, I continued as well, I implemented something else. And if we didn't communicate it well, and we meet half a year later, we will maybe have a hard time combining these developments. And it came up in, the, in these comments was that I'm not, I don't know exactly when something was introduced. So I have to unpack all of these and have a look. Also, if I find a problem, let's say I find a bug, and I want to now know when did I introduce this bug? Because, because uh, did I do that before I published? the nature paper, or did I introduce it after? Did I introduce the bug before I gave it to my colleague or after? And again, I have to go in and unpack and have a look and do a lot of grabbing to find out when something was introduced. So we, will, we want to have something better than that. And we will see that oh, Git is one of the tools that gives us this functionality. Some more motivation, why version control? Uh, this is this is maybe the one mentioned most often that I can undo. I can roll back if I make a mistake, and I recorded the the snapshots very often. I can go back to a working snapshot, and there is branching, and I mentioned that already. And the branching makes collaboration really easier. So these questions that maybe all of us have heard or asked. And I have asked some of these. So I will just finish my work and then you can start with your changes. Oh, can you please send me the latest version? Where is the latest version? Which version are you using? And which version have the authors used in the paper that I'm trying to reproduce right now? And if we use these tools like Git and GitHub, we will not really need these questions. And especially the last one is, it's really about reproducibility. So for reproducibility, we need to be able to indicate 
which version of the code I have used in my paper. And, and when you find a bug, then you want to know when precisely was this introduced. And, and I want to know, and many, maybe many people want to know, and, and maybe users want to know, are published results affected? If we don't have version control, it's really hard to answer these questions. And then we can really question, is this reproducible? And many of us are familiar with collaborating through Dirtbox, collaborating through Google Drive. Uh, and also there, uh, you, you don't really need to email snapshots. But it's not exactly the same thing. What if you want to work on multiple versions at the same time? On how, how do you br do branching with uh, with Dropbox and Google Drive? Do you make a copy? How do you how do you combine them? Why why Git and why GitHub? So these are not the only tools. Uh, the reason why we will uh, discuss show you Git and exercise this on GitHub is because these are the most popular tools. And even if you choose then a different version control tool, and maybe if you choose a different platform to host your repository, uh, it's still likely that you get into contact with GitHub and Git, and we think it's, it's beneficial for you if you know how this works. So this is why we do it. But we have no affiliation with GitHub, and Git is not the only tool out there, but it is the most popular. It has a lot of, a lot of traction. And now, now that I <clears throat> am motivated a bit theoretically, I wanted to show you a real life example of a real repository. And this is so that we can look ahead. And this is where I would like us to be in tomorrow or by Wednesday. So I wanted to show you some of the features that we will then understand and we will be able to do. And this is where we want to end up. The example that I want to show you is a, is a really famous Git repository because it is the one that has been used to produce these event horizon telescope images, which, uh, which were super exciting and uh, which were trending now not too long ago, you know, these black hole images. And this is the repositories on GitHub. And I will now browse few, a few of these aspects and point out what is so fantastic about this about this functionality. Just moving around my tabs here a bit. So here is the Git repository. And right now we don't have to really understand everything that we will see here. It's not. It's more to give you a bit of a feel, but we will explain that more in detail. First thing I wanted to show is that the repository has lots of lots of commits. It has close to 2000 commits and these are the snapshots. And each snapshot has, has a unique version. And, it, and we can go back to any of these and we can compare them. And then when I publish a, a, publish a result, I can refer to a version, a specific version of this of this project, and we will see that there is there are even better better ways to refer to a particular version when we publish the code. Then, the next thing I wanted to show you is that there are branches. I wanted to show you how they look. Insights network, and these are the branches that I've been mentioning. So. These development lines here, these are parallel development tracks where the developer is working on different features, you know, uh, in, in parallel. These little dots are these commits. We can also see that there are then other collaborators who work on some other aspects. And here, here these developments merge. So that was a merge point. And here they merge as well. Can we see a branching point? Here is a branching point. Uh, reproducibility. Uh, one feature that we will visit tomorrow, I know I just want to highlight it, is we can take one of the one of the files in the project 
and we can annotate it. So here I'm annotating one of the files on, on the right panel, right side of my, of my window. This is the source file. In this case, it's a Python project. But what you see on the left side is well, each, each line of the code is annotated. And I can see that, for instance, this line of the project was last modified 11 days ago. And I can find out by which commit precisely. And this is incredibly valuable for reproducibility, because if I now find a problem in my code, I can find out when was it last modified, when was it int introduced. And again, if, if you don't use version control, try to think how you would approach that kind of situation. So this, we, will, we will practice this annotation tomorrow and we will explain that a bit more tomorrow, but it's incredibly valuable. Collaboration. When we, I mentioned branching, but we, one, another really functionality that I like a lot is I can refer to a code portion. So I'm not sure how visible this is, but there is a code portion in here, which is now highlighted in, in yellow. And I can refer to another code portion. And the nice thing is that here there's a permalink. I can get a permanent link to this code portion and I can send this code portion to a colleague. And then, then I don't have to tell the colleague in an email, you know, please download the code, extract it, go to this file, go to line 66. This is what I'm talking about. But I can, we can talk about code by sending us links. I, I use and like that a lot. Two more things I wanted to show is forks and contributors. Let's go back to this really nice repository. Something that we will see uh, on Wednesday is uh, these are the forks. So other developers can take a copy of this project into their own user space uh, where you then can make modification and derivative work and you can experiment with your own ideas. And here 460 people have forked this project uh, and then at some point you, we will also learn how you can make changes on your own in your own copy and then how to contribute it back to to the to this repository where we forked from we can see who contributed to to this repository of course we need to be careful it's not only about commits and it's not only about the lines of code so there is more to our code contribution than than just commits but git github does does uh, record this and we get some metrics and finally i wanted to show and this is also something we will learn how can we at specific points in time we will want to make releases and a release it's like we can give we can give the code a tag and this could be this is maybe something that we distribute to the community or it could we could refer to to the project that we have published or to the, to the PhD thesis submitted. So this, we will learn how to do that. We will also learn how we can get, uh, how, how we can get a digital object identifier for our code and for our releases. And this, this was a really brief demo. We will, give it more understanding in the next today and next two days. The features that I showed are not, of course, not only available on GitHub. GitLab has very similar functionality. They can be done on other sites or by yourself or without GitHub at all. But I think version control is, is the minimum requirement. Git and GitHub are very popular. We teach them because we think it's good for, for your career. I think I want to mention one more thing and that because I, I talked a lot about collaborating with others, but we often start, some of us work on our project on our own. And sometimes you hear, well, yeah, this sounds all really great, Git and GitHub, but I don't really need it because it's just me. But we will try to convince you that um, 
so there's this quote I like a lot by by Nico that the two main the, your two main collaborators will be your past self and your future self, and even imagine yourself in in a couple of years uh, working with uh, with this kind of setup. So even if it's if it's a single person universe development and a project and research career, even then it's it's really valuable for you to have this tool in particular for the reproducibility reason. Um, thank you, Radovan, for the nice introduction. It was really, really, uh, I see a lot of questions. I was taking a look at the, some of the questions myself. There seems a lot of uh, people in the room and uh, there's a lot of great questions and hopefully we can address them all. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen in about a minute or so. Just a brief introduction. I'm Stefan. I'm from CSC in Finland. Um, I'll be taking you to some of the, or the first part of this introduction to Git version control. Um, and um, then we'll see when we can stop. We'll do a bunch of exercises along the way. That's when um, we're going to break you up in some rooms so you can work on them in, uh, collaboratively. And you'll see me reach, looking out to the side from time to time. That's to consult some of my notes. Uh, I don't have multiple screens. I just have a tablet and some pen and paper. So um, that's why I'm looking towards the side. Um, I'll, I'll start with uh, sharing my screen, as I said. Yeah, so. Uh, Radovan, where this Git intro lesson, Radovan already did the first part, which is the motivation, and we'll jump into the basics. And with this part of the lesson, I looked to some of the comments of some of your um, things or introductions, and most of you, um, or some of you, uh, are it's the first time you're experiencing it. Hopefully, it's going to be a pleasant experience, and you're gonna uh, you're gonna see the benefit of it. And um, some of you already starting asking practical questions like how do I use this with my Jupyter notebooks? And of course, we'll address them, we'll address these questions. I think we have a spe uh, special dedicated workshop on Jupyter notebooks. If you hang, hang out with us till the end, you might be able to get answers to all your questions. So, <clears throat> sorry. As, as Radovan pointed out, Git is a version control system. It's not the only one. It's uh, most likely not the only one you'll be experiencing or encountering along the way, but is the one we're uh, uh, showing this workshop as most some of the concepts are um, translated to, uh, to other uh, version control systems as well. Of course, what makes Git a bit more special than Subversion or CVS is the fact that it's a distributed version control system in comparison with a centralized version control system. But what this means is that at some point in time, um, and we'll get back to this on the collaborative uh, part, that a snapshot or, or a repository can be at uh, your uh, different than from your, from your collaborator uh, because it's, a distribu it's distributed towards multiple locations. Of course, you can use GitHub to centralize this repository, but uh, at its core, it's a distributed version control system. Um, Radovan also mentioned a lot about snapshots, uh, commits, um, uh, saving an entire project, how do we, uh, and a lot of new terminology that might, you might have uh, heard about it. We'll try to get over, this, over that terminology in this lesson to understand how Git operates, how to make commits, and how to select specific commits. So I saw some questions like, what exactly is a snapshot? I'm not sure if this was answered or not, but a snapshot, think of it as some sort of, um, there's a nice um, analogy here, where a snapshot is like, or a staging area is where you actually create some sort of focus on a specific thing, on a specific portion of your work. And once you try to register that, that work, you do a commit and register and register that commit into, into, the, into, um, into, the, into that repository, to that Git repository. So the first two commands we're actually be learning in, in, this, uh, in this workshop are uh, add and commit. 
to uh, to stage uh, stage some change and commit it to that repository so we can tr uh, we can uh, track it and refer to it and see and basically start doing our work and start utilizing the, the functionalities of git for the for this workshop we'll be using command line or for this for uh, first part of the workshop we'll be using command line to to illustrate some of the function uh, functionality um, uh, I assume most of you are familiar with command line, but if not, I'll be explaining everything throughout the way. Uh, of course, but of course, this is not the only way to use Git, or not the only way to use this function, the functionalities of Git. Uh, there are many, many, many interactive uh, interfaces, UIs, graphical web interfaces that facilitate and abstract some of the concepts we'll be we'll be teaching throughout this workshop. Those are all nice, nice and handy. Um, but we would like to first focus on the what's behind them to in order to understand what happens so you can easily refer to it and if need be debug it and um, go on to do your work but we will see to that all the changes and snaps are, snapshots are um, stored in a folder called dot git in uh, when we initialize the repository We'll get back to that. And if we remove that repository, then it would, if we remove that folder, all the changes, all the history is lost. So if you want to, to have a clean slate of that, of your repository and delete any of, uh, I don't know, comments that you don't like or remove all the tracked history, that's easy, that's the quick way to do it. Just removing that dot git repository. Um, this also has presents also functionality. So if you like to move it around on your on your uh, computer to move it from one directory to the other, or just move it to a different hard disk, if you're switching computers, that's easy to do. Just copying the folder with is uh, with the included .git uh, uh, folder, and it will automatically, automatically even um, work out of the box. So it will keep you all the history and all the changes uh, you have made. Um, this first part of the workshop will focus mostly on how you get started as an individual. But, and I know uh, Raghavan mentioned a lot of the collaborative aspect of Git, of using Git. That's also important, but as he also mentioned, you will first start most likely your project in your own environment. So it's good to actually know how to start because these foundations are good also in collaborative and if you make good foundations to your work you can also make it easy to collaborate um, there's an advanced question that the participants i'm not sure if we already addressed it in the question in the in the questions of the hackpad um, what do you think the outcome would be if you stage your file and then edit it and stage it again and do this several times before you commit you do a commit I'll leave this up to the discussion in the hackpad and I'll get started because I assume most of you just want to uh, get started with exercises and actually learn something. Um, before we get started, um, hopefully everyone has Git configured um, in their environment and they can uh, work with it. So I'm gonna switch to my console. Um, I already prepared a folder with today's date. Um, my console might look a bit different than yours, but this is because I'm using um, something to dis uh, to remove all the all the abstractions and focus on what's in, what's important to me in my console. Uh, then again, if that's that's confusing to you, please let me know, and I'll switch to um, uh, to a normal console and make your life easier or and um, avoid any unnecessary questions. First of all, so this directory is um, empty. I'm going to type ls panis al to list all the contents in this directory. And of course, this is empty. It lists my username and my group. And but this directory is empty. I can do that with ls sample, and it will show me nothing because I have nothing this this directory. Now, I want to check if I have the git git what git I have installed. So. What I'm gonna do now is check the version of Git. So I'm gonna do Git space version. What this will tell me is the Git version I have installed in my local environment. This is, uh, should work on all, all OSs. I'm currently using Linux, but this should work on your Mac, uh, Linux, or, and, or, or Windows environment. 
and I'm going to hit return or enter, and this will going to show me that Git version 2.18.2. But this means I have this, uh, this particular version, but if you have a newer version or an older version, the concepts we're going to teach you today are still uh, translatable, those versions as well. Um, uh, okay, and I'm also going to check the config. So I'm going to do git config minus minus list. And this will show me some of the configs I have here already set up. I already set up some aliases, which are specific to me. We're not going to uh, address them right now, but what's important are these two lines, which is the user email and uh, username. So I, it has my name and my email address, which is my personal email address. And if you're entering the screen, you can easily press Q to exit it because uh, it is a VI uh, editor. So it shows the VI editor. Now, we're gonna proceed with type along exercise, which is a guacamole recipe with Git. And uh, this implies creating a new, rep a, new repository, a new directory, initializing the repository and um, see how we can add file in. Uh, work with them. So I'm going to create a repository uh, recipe and I'm going to go into that re uh, directory cd recipe. Okay, let's see what's inside this directory. It should be empty. So it is an empty directory. So now this is this comes the important part and to, uh, to where I'm going to write git in it. This what actually imply, this what actually does, it initializes the current directory to be tracked as a Git repository. So I'm gonna write Git in it and then hit return or enter. And it said to me, I initialize this empty Git directory in this following path. And, and it shows me here in this, uh, in this command line that uh, it already started a uh, branch. But let's see what's it happened inside the directory. So I'm gonna ls. Um, doesn't show me anything, but I want to see if it actually did this .git, repo, .git folder. Yes, it did the .git folder. I can even see what's inside it. Um, and it shows me a bunch of files uh, that are inside, folders that are inside it. So there are branches, config, description, head, hooks, info objects, refs, and so on. I'm also going to check the status. So one important part to do at all times when I get in a Git repository, check its status. So I'm going to do Git status. As it tells me I'm on branch master. It tells me I have not committing anything yet and there's nothing to commit or track. Which means I have no, no changes, no files to, to, to commit to this and track in this repository. So let's change that by creating two files, which is instructions.txt and ingredients.txt uh, following the um, uh, tutorial online. Hopefully you can type along. If not, feel, uh, feel free to just watch at the, at the moment. So I'm gonna use my editor. Again, you can use any editor of your choice. I'm gonna use Vim. Um, because uh, it's more familiar, it's something I'm more familiar with, uncomfortable with. But again, feel free to use any editor of your choice. It doesn't need to be a command line editor, but it needs the file to be created in the directory or in the folder you initialize with Git. Uh, so .txt, vim instructions.txt. With Vim, in order to insert something in it, I'm gonna press I on the keyboard and it will show me in the bottom corner something like insert. So I'm gonna start adding some instructions, like chop avocados, avocados. Hopefully I can write, I'm good today. I'm gonna chop an onion. Then I'm gonna squeeze lime. I'm going to add salt, something that makes everything nice and mix well. So these are some of the instructions. Uh, in order to save this instruction in the VI editor, I press escape, then column. Um, okay. 
uh, then column and WQ to save the, the changes I just made. Now I'm going to create an, a second file, which is the ingredients. .txt. So I'm going to have, uh, sorry, that was my bad. I didn't press the I to insert. So I'm going to add two avocados. Then I'm going to add one lime and two uh, teaspoons of salt. I'm going to do the same, the same thing and I'm going to escape this column WQ to save and this should be it. Now, what we said that is important to do at all times uh, after we started adding changes and to see the status of our repository is git status. And I cannot emphasize this enough that please check at all time after you do changes, add files, any kind of uh, changes in the current directory, check your status Get using git status. So I'm gonna do just so. And we see now something changed in the message that this, this, this tells me. Uh, it tells me on branch masters, there's still no commits, but I do have some untracked files. Um, what this means, untracked files, it means that something it is in the current repository. However, you're not tracking the changes of it. What tracking means is basically you're following the changes that have been done to a particular file folder um, in the, the current repository. In order to track those changes, it even suggests me something to do. It says git add and file. And to add the file to include the file that will be committed. So let's just do what it tells us, which is git add ingredients. And I'm gonna use tab total complete um, the, um, the name. So I'm gonna git add ingredients. And before we, we add the second one, we're gonna do git status again to check, to see what happened. So no something changed. It, it tells me that um, there's a change to be committed, which is in the ingredients.txt. And because I haven't added instructions, it tells me, well, you still have untracked files to, to track, and that's inst instructions. So I'm gonna add that as well. So I'm gonna do git add instructions, tab total complete, and git status again. And now there are some changes to be committed. I have not committed the changes yet. So let's do the, just that. And I'm gonna do the change, the commit by typing git commit. And now this comes the important part, which is the minus M and we'll get back to this. The mi but minus M option tells us that we are gonna write a message. I'm gonna hit space and then write in quotes um, a, a message. So adding ingredients and instructions. Okay, hopefully I added, I wrote everything correctly and it tell, tell, told me that I committed two files change, eight insertions, and I created, uh, added new files, which is ingredients and instructions. So, Let's check what the status says. Git status. Now it's the files, it's everything is committed. So there's nothing to commit. The work directory is clean. We said we we're going to come back to the commit. So in order to find out what these options were, other options uh, are um, available for this commit command, git commit command, you can write git um, uh, help and commit. Commit. This will take us into the manual. And once I hit enter, you can see a lot of the descriptions what this uh, particular commit does. Uh, and it's a nice source for uh, inspiration of what you could do with um, the would git commit option, commit command. And I see the minus M. It says a message, use given message as the common message. 
and there it says multiple uh, multiple messages can be written or multiple M's can be uh, can be provided. And to exit this, it says me on the bottom uh, to press Q to quit. So I'm going to do just that. Um, how are we doing? Should we go faster? Should we go slower? Um, how are we doing? On uh, any questions so far that we need to address? No, nothing. Remember, you can use these go faster and go slower symbols in the participant list to indicate what you'd like. Okay, so let's view one more thing uh, before uh, this and then we're, uh, we can do an exercise, then take a break. We can do a 10 minute exercise and take a break and then uh, we can come back with the rest of the lesson. So we said, we've seen so far how we can um, add the changes, track the changes, commit the changes to repository, but Radovan also mentioned something that it's easy to track and I saw through some of your comments, keeping history or keeping track of what happened. How does Git do that, you might ask? Well, it's for each individual things that we commit, it creates, it creates a message or it creates a history, more a snapshot or a point in history that it registers with this particular message. And that particular message is tracked in the .git folder that we have seen. And the .git folder, we can actually visualize. There's actually a git command, a git command for that. And I'm going to clear what's on the screen. So I'm in, on my keyboard, I'm going to press Control L to clear, to clear what's on the screen so we can have a, we can view it up top. Um, but continuing where we left, left off, we're going to do git log. The git log will show me the actual history of this particular repository. So I'm going to see what happens. It tells me there's a commit with a particular hash. Uh, string. The hash string is relevant to this particular repository and unique to this repository. What this actually implies? What do you think this actually implies and why do you think it's not one, two, three, four? Or I don't know, some A, B, C, D. Uh, why do you think it's not, it just doesn't use as a sequence to number bits? Why do you think it's important? Well, I'll give you part of my answer, but you can discuss it in the chat and then we, we can address it after the break. One of particular uh, things is that um, if we were to do one, two, three, four, and we were to address, address some of the other commands of the, of the git that has to revert some of the changes to remove some of the history, that will not make sense in the long term. So it is, it is ideal to have this unique identifiable hash to refer to them and they are particular to a certain repository because if you have one, two, three, four, then, you, then the sequence will be broken, then it will be confusing to keep track of history. And there are some particular, there are some other details to this um, log. You can see the author, the date, when this has happened. Uh, it shows me my local time, which is in uh, Central European, uh, which is Eastern European Standard Time and it shows me the commit message. Now, um, we can also view this, I'm gonna press Q to exit this. So I'm, I can also view just as a one line, which is git log minus minus one line to show me just a particular portion of the commit, just the just first, first part of the commit uh, hash and then which branch I'm on, where the head is, and we're gonna come back to branching to discuss what actually head means, and then the commit message. And one other particular uh, useful command is git log minus minus stat, which shows me more in or in-depth um, information of what actually happened in that, uh, in that commit, which means the files that have been added, how many changes have happened, this plus plus means actually something has been added to that file. 
how many trials have changed and how many insertions, which is uh, possible. If you would have had deletions, it would have showed us also things that have been removed. Now, it's something we can break up into groups. So I'm gonna um, go to this um, lesson into the basics. There's an exercise here, which we can uh, start breaking up into, into groups. So um, we're gonna add half an onion to ingredients and also to instructions to, uh, and also add to instructions enjoy. And then you can, you should experience some of the commands, which is diff, which shows us the differences that have, or something that has happened. We'll go back to, we'll come back after you did the exercise into this, uh, to them. And also you can also experience with other git log, git show, also you can commit your own uh, changes, so on and so forth. And if you are feeling a bit more advanced, there are optional exercises you can do as well. A good introduction into um, how you can get started with Git, how you can add files, make changes, and so on and so forth. Um, now comes from the tricky part, knowing how to properly work with Git and how to advance your um, skills into and or to perfect your skills into working with Git. And one of the things to uh, actually get started with, an easy way to get started with is the actual commit messages. Um, and to consider why those are important, the commit messages uh, is the fact that um, you might end up collaborating or you might end up uh, sharing that repository with other people. And even more so, if you don't do the proper comment message, you will end up in a, even though you're using Git in a similar situation to what uh, Radovan was showing at the beginning where there's a bunch of files and there's names to it and dates and so on and so forth and you don't know where to get what and um, from where. So having a good uh, Git history is one of the things you, you should um, uh, learn how to do it in a, in a good way. And one good way to learn is by seeing what you what are some of the bad commit messages. And one of the bad commit messages are fix, oops, save work, foobar, toto, or any kind of one-liner that doesn't describe uh, exactly what happened or what uh, specifically was added with that co with that commit or that change. You can also see more more uh, more bad commit messages is like this. So. <laughs> Uh, or if you refresh the, pa the pages, fix the fixes, or um, uh, this is supposed to crash. So there are, there are even links to the actual comment messages uh, here that are being pulled from Git. So these are all bad examples of comment messages. And, but how to write it is, uh, is mainly think of what others would like to see what others would like to, to get out of that commit, what kind of information they would, they would need to. And think of you, what you would like to see in a year after you come back to that repository and get out of that uh, history. The, the changes that happened, files, history, the purpose, why that happened, so on and so forth. And successful and good tracked projects or good history is contributes to the maintainability adoption and overall um, call it quote unquote success of a specific project. Uh, if you would address this to your, um, or if you reference or this, uh, your repository or source code with your research paper, think of it that some of, some of the researchers or, or some of the other people, folks that are peer reviewing might like to see the repository understand the changes you have made. Sorry, so Stefan, to interrupt. Can you maybe zoom in a little bit on the browser? Okay, sure. Uh, this is this better? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so on and so forth. And there's also good references of how to how to go over uh, how to address the commit messages. Uh, I would think of these as further reading, because these are something you should read on your own pace and figure out at your own pace or with your collaborators. Um, of course, there's, you might get it wrong at first, but practice makes perfect. 
in my experience at least. I used to write these kind of bad commit messages myself, uh, even though uh, I was not the only one collaborating on them and I got scolded. So uh, yeah, that's one of the things to get started with, having good commit messages in your, in your, uh, in your history. The second is understanding what you should track in Git. Um, should you track, and just asking this question, should you track all, all, all changes to your project? Should you track, I don't know, all the generated files, all the uh, data that has been generated and can be replicated again? Uh, what file types you, can, you, you should actually track, you know, uh, things that result from a compilation, things that um, run differently for different platforms, um, numbers or any other kind of files that are specific to a language or to an editor or to your specific, to your environment. Should you track these actually? Um, binaries and so on and so forth. These are some of the questions you could ask and uh, before understanding what you should track in your repository. And, but how you track the files that you don't want to track? Well, Git offers a nice tool um, that is you could ignore you can specify it to ignore certain files and that just means creating a dot git ignore file and uh, for example if we go back to the command line you don't need to type along this so I'm just going to show you to show it to you so I'm going to create a dot git ignore file so vim dot git ignore so you don't need to type along with this just watch for now and I'm going to insert and I'm going to reuse shamefully these uh, these two uh, comments here and I'm going to paste them. I'm going to press escape and then uh, column and WQ to save this file. What this actually tells it that it will ignore the f all the files that end in this extension and all the directories, uh, all the compile directories, which are in PyCache, uh, all the files that are in a compile directory, which is PyCache, that directory. So it will ignore everything that is there. Yeah. Um, and we can see, uh, we can then do git status. So you also need to track this file. So this is not tracked. So in order to track it, we're gonna hit edit and we're gonna press dot and dot git ignore. So I'm gonna press tab to auto complete. And let's see the status again. We have not committed. So we're gonna do git commit minus m and a message adding git ignore, ignore file for Python. And this is tracked. So now let's see the history well, with git log. So it shows the latest, his, the latest commit at the top. You will always see the latest commit at the top. It shows me the adding git ignore file for Python and its uh, hash, its specific hash and uh, all the other information. We can also see the one line so it's git log one line. And it will show me the two commits again with the, with the one at the top, which shows the, where they're headed and what, what branches and the commit message. Going back to this. Um, and of course there are multiple things you could, you could uh, ignore in that repository, but one good, uh, Thing you could do is actually generate these git ignore files because sometimes it's tedious to to uh, address all the things specific to a repository or all the things specific to a programming languages programming language so what i do is usually go to git i ignore.io and i usually just type the programming languages i'm using or the editor i'm using which is might be vim and then I hit create, and this will create a, a git ignore file for me, which I can just copy paste in uh, in my uh, in that git ignore file I just created. So this is one of the tools you could also use to generate your git ignore files. Of course, you can support multiple languages if you 
if you need to, and there's also command line interface if you fancy that. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's um, multiple user interfaces you could use. We mentioned some of it, some of here, some of them here, like a GitHub Desktop. I think that's specific for Windows, Source Tree, and that might be specific for Mac and and Windows. And of course, there's other um, command or there are other graphical user interfaces for Linux, Windows, uh, Mac OS, and so on and so forth, which you can use. And um, I recommend them using um, once you get more familiar with Git because it, if they're integrated with your editor, it might be easier to than just uh, using the command line. Now, let's see what some of the things we learn in this repository. So we learn how to um, create snapshots, um, we learn how to create commits. So we're gonna use the add, we'll learn how to use the add and commit. Uh, we'll learn how to initialize a repository, how to commit the files then, how to check, to constantly check the status using git status, see the history, Let's see the diffs. So I'm not sure to what degree there was shown in the, um, in the, in the, um, in the exercise. I told we we're gonna come back to that. So um, if we type now git diff, what do you think it'll show us? show us nothing because we don't have anything uh, staged. But if we make a change to a file, for example, we're gonna make a change to the ingredients. So I'm gonna do Vim ingredients. And I'm gonna press I to insert. And I'm gonna add uh, two cloves of garlic. Hope I spelled this correctly. Press escape column, WQ to, uh, to save. And if I press git diff again, you show me what I added. Of course, you can also check the stage changes and we'll see this in the next lesson, but git diff shows you the difference of the um, currently uh, on stage changes. Um, so this was part of the exercise we have seen. Um, and of course, we can also use git move and show uh, or show to so specific changes to commit, uh, move and remove. So we can do one of them, which is git show. And but first, I need to remember one of the commit messages uh, or commit hashes. So I'm going to do git log minus minus one line. Uh, and I type this, so it's not online, it's one line. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna get show, and then I'll paste this. And it shows me the changes that have happened on that specific commit. All the additions, all the uh, changes I make, I, I only made additions at this at this point in time. So, but if you, may, if you made any changes or removed any ingredients in your files, it will show you specifically to that. Okay, and and of course we can you can test your understanding of this, um, how to do this thing below. But. Uh, and there's a solution here. We're not going to address it right now. We're just going to move uh, forward with, um, with the next uh, stage of the lesson. So for any questions, anything else to address and chat. Okay, we got in two commands to or two uh, points to go a bit uh, faster. So we're gonna um, tag along a bit faster. But if any point, uh, some of you feel lost, please let us know and we're gonna go a bit slower. Yeah. Um, the next step of the lesson or the next stage of the lesson in the introduction. Um, so we're gonna go to first one, we get the introduction, we address the basics. 
and the next step is using Git staging area. Um, we talked about a lot about the staging, uh, about committing and so forth. When, um, what is the staging area? What command should you use? Uh, what should be included in a single commit? Because we said commits are important and uh, writing them in a proper manner is important. And, um, and how do you browse history? That's, that's also important. Of course, we saw the git log command, but how do you go in more deeper into it? So it's important to note that, you, um, of course, the code is important, but also history, as I said, it's important because it tells a certain history of the code. What did happen at what point in time? What kind of changes have happened? And think, uh, think of it like um, any kind of history that you would well, like to tell with your code. You added feature A or you added um, analysis B to your code and so on and so forth. You would like to group them somehow that it makes sense to person reading your code or reading the history of a code because most of the times when uh, a developer starts uh, you know, in a project that, or in a repository that he or she has not uh, been part of it from the beginning, they usually go to the, to the history and that, if that history makes sense, they can easily understand to, uh, what has happened and for what reasons. So they don't have to, they don't have to readdress the discussion of what change that had happened in the past or if you feel like to see if you're forgetful like I am, and you would like to see what happened a year back in, with your code, and you don't, don't remember for what reason, you just look at the history. And if you have good enough written history, you would make it easy for you to understand why that, why that happened and for uh, some of the specifics of changes that have happened. So this is more of a discussion. Um, um, and some examples to note here. So for example, A, um, like we did with the, with the ingredients and instructions. So example A says there's a commit hash and there's a commit message. Um, and the commit hash, the commit message says add feature A, B, and C. What, and then example two says implement feature C in a, in a commit, then implement feature B in another commit, then implement, implement feature A in a different commit. So what are some drawbacks with these? Uh, well, from my point of view, and of course you can address your own uh, in hack, HackMD, these things. And one thing to note about HackMD, I forgot to mention, and I'm not sure what Devon mentioned. So, um, if you're not writing in HackMD, please use it in the view mode. If you're writing, you can use it in edit mode, but if you're not writing it, please use it in view mode so it will be easier for others that try to use it. Did you already mention this, Radovan? Or... Uh, only on the chat. Okay. So we are, hoping, we are hoping that this will help uh, not locking up the HackMD. Okay. So what are the Coming back to the lesson, what are some of the issues with these commits? Well, for example, with the first commit, I would think like you would not like to have three features in one commit. That would be very difficult to, to track them all and to see what has happened for what reason and to you know, addressing all three changes as once, especially if they happen in the same file. Might be, might be very difficult to uh, to go to the file and understand what feature related what is feature A and B and C in the same file. Well, if they're different files, yes, but if in this, they're in the same file, that's very difficult to to distinguish between them. The second example is a bit better because it try, it creates a history. First, you add feature A, then feature B, then feature C. You said the first one is the latest commit, or the one at the top is the latest commit. So you could make it easier to track but this doesn't tell us what was feature a b and c what that happened for what reason what would they imply of course you could take a look at the code but once you browse what once you just browse in history it's very difficult to to distinguish between them um, then it's then we have a commit saving three months of miscellaneous work i forgot to commit oh that's that's nice but 
then again, not so nice. It's nice that one uh, actually committed the work that uh, he or she was supposed to commit three months from three months, but saving it all at once might be very difficult to, to track what happened during that time. So the size of the actual commit of the changes in the commit need to be a bit more granular than just saving three months of work. You might need to split it down into something more like it has done in example four. There's a work in progress, forgot to file a bug fix. This is nice, it's split it into specific commits, but uh, the problem with this is that it again doesn't, doesn't, it's not too understandable to the person reading it. Forgot, forgot file and bug fix. Yes, that's a nice that the file was added and the bug fix was created, however, a bit more details on this would be required. Uh, what file was added, for what, pur what purpose it was added, what's the bug fix, this commit address, and so on and so forth. Again, with the feature B and A. And we come back to a, to a different, uh, different thing that is, um, uh, that is work on a specific date. It was not that was that was committed. However, uh, that was committed on dates. However, this doesn't detail again the, the specifics of the work of what had happened and for what reason. Um, but these are some of my thoughts of what I experienced in uh, in uh, practice and uh, how you can experience how you can better work with them. Uh, that's or how you can. Um, utilize these as a reference, mostly for bad examples. Um, it's up to you. And if you encounter this, this will be a nice discussion in the exercise section we're gonna have in this particular lesson. So we want to have nice commits. And we want to, as a rule of thumb, we want to save as open checkpointing. Um, can we have both? Um, well, we saw one way to add a commit which was git commit minus m. But there's another way to, to write nicer commits and to have, be more specific into, to what uh, we're writing them, which is an interactive commit. And we do this with git commit minus p. Uh, and we can see how this goes along, but uh, by making um, two, two, two changes to this. So, this will be a nice um, thing to, to watch. You don't need to type along. So I'm gonna clear this. I'm gonna press Control L on my, on my keyboard and I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna check the status. So always check the status of your repository. It seems I have made some changes to this and this is perfect because then I can make a commit about that. I can track these changes. So how do I track them? Uh, I'm gonna add, git add ingredients.txt. And I'm gonna check the status of what happened, git status. And now I'm gonna commit it. So git commit, but instead of minus M, I'm gonna use minus P. Well, this minus P option of the repress return will open the editor you have configured for your Git environment. And you will be able to use it for your, uh, for writing the commit message. So I'm gonna press return. And for me, it's gonna open dev or VI. So in order to start typing into it, it I'm gonna press I and it should appear this insert at the bottom. So, how do I write a good commit? It already tells me like this, the comments that, or the messages that start with this uh, hash symbol are gonna be, uh, or this uh, this symbol is gonna, are gonna be ignored. So I'm gonna write first a line. So add garlic, I think I added garlic to the, to the ingredients, ingredients. This is a one, one liner to spe be specific of what added. Now the reason why I added, I like garlic in my uh, food. Of 
course, you might not be for uh, the same opinion, but I like it in my guacamole. And yeah, and this is all, all the reason. Uh, or I can be a bit more specific, so uh, just one clove of garlic. Yeah, so this will show me um, the commit, the commit, or this will be a bit more specific of the commit message. Why did I do it like this? Well, the reason I did it like this is if you're going to use the one liner, what is going to show it at the, at the top is going to be this. Then if you look into more detail of the commit message, this will be apparent as well. So let's see if I'm right or, or I remember it wrongly. So I'm going to hit escape, then column and WQ to save. And let's see the, if the status. So git status. There's nothing to comment. Then let's check the log with one line. So I'm going to write git log minus minus one line. Hopefully I don't type it bad again. So it shows me that I had added garlic to the ingredients, which is nice. You see, you can see the one line, but I want to explore it in a bit more detail. So let's go into a bit more, more detail about this. Um, so I'm going to do git log. So it shows me that this, this has happened. Uh, I added garlic in my food. Uh, I like garlic in my food, so I suggest one clove of garlic. Yeah. I can also um, view the specific comment. So what has happened, so I'm gonna take this particular hash, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna do git show for this time. And I'm gonna, sorry, I mistyped. So I'm going to do git show and paste this. So it's going to show me what particular happened in this, what happened in this particular commit. So it shows me the full hash. Um, so the files that were added are ingredients.txt and what was added is here in this um, nice, in this green, it was two cloves of garlic. And I actually made a, made a mistake here. I didn't add one clove, I added two cloves of garlic. So I forgot what has happened. And we're gonna come back to this in the, in the next stage of the lesson. So, yeah. So now we're gonna see a different thing, a different way to look at this commit. So um, I, should, I told you that git diff shows you the difference, but for things that are unchanged. So if I do git diff now, it will not show me anything. But if I do git diff minus minus staged, it will show me any, nothing because I haven't staged anything. But let's do a change. So vim instructions. So I'm gonna vim instructions tab. And I'm gonna add, um, uh, chop garlic. garlic, press escape, column and WQ. So I'm gonna save this and let's do git diff to see the changes. So this will show me the git diff to garlic. Now if I stage these changes, so if I do git add in instructions, Difference here, if I do git diff again, it will not show me this. But if I do git staged, it will show me the, the changes that have been staged. When do you think this will be useful, actually? Well, it comes back to the question we asked in the, in the previous lesson. So if you do multiple, uh, if you do multiple stagings, uh, you stage multiple things. At the same, uh, and we don't commit. Well, 
you can you can adjust this. This is the, this is the actual um, where you will see you can in the stage area before you commit you can see the stage things and you can adjust them before you commit. But of course, you can also adjust the commit afterwards. So, coming back to the to the lesson, what is this um, staging area? What is, what is this useful for? There are some analogies here, and we first addressed the, um, the focusing and snapshot in the previous lesson. Um, but there's also an analogy of, of moving boxing. So imagine you're moving something from A to B. This is a nice example of with IKEA. Uh, you have an IKEA box and you're moving and you're packing your things. Um, you can still put stuff in a box um, and then you can just uh, you put random stuff in the box. And at some point you figure out, well, yeah, but I put plates with glasses and everything will break if I put them all in one place. So you're thinking, well, I need to put them in different boxes. That will translate to different commits because you might want to separate your glasses from your plates. Um, or any other um, kitchenware you have in order to make it more easier to unpack and for stuff not to break. So you might want to take what has been staged. So even if you put in a box, that means if you put stuff in a box, that means it's staged. If you, if you take it, uh, you might want to take it out and then uh, put it in different boxes or diff different commits. So the box corresponds to the staging area where you can craft your commits and uh, before you submit them. And you can individually, uh, in, then after you're fine with that commit, you can you know, fine with that staging area or the changes you made in that staging area, then you can actually commit it. So it's like a um, prepare, preparation area for your, for your commits so to speak. And we have a thing where you can illustrate what my illustration where how this, could, how this is, um, okay, can, um, this can work uh, or how this is working. So we have a working directory and uh, something that has been committed. And the staging area is the intermediate step where you can uh, add stuff, uh, different, uh, check the, what has been changed and um, what is there to be changed and committed. So, yeah. And of course we have a bunch of commands uh, we can work with, um, work with it, which is, we saw one which is add, uh, which stages, uh, changes, uh, all changes in the file. Uh, git add minus p, which can lets you uh, choose which changes to, to, uh, to work within a file. Commit, which commits the changes to the committed area. Diff and diff stage, what we have seen difference between unstaged changes and staged changes. Gitrm removes a file. Reset, uh, resets any uh, stage changes. And uh, git checkout checks out the latest ver committed version of a file. Yeah. Let's take a look of um, example workflow, how you might want to work with this staging area. Um, what, what would this, uh, this help you with? For example, you add the file, this is checkpoint one, you, uh, you added uh, more changes to that file, that is checkpoint two, then you added another file, that is checkpoint three, and so on and so on. And you made changes to that file with your checkpoint four. At some point, you know, you note know, you do a diff and check the changes that has happened in checkpoint four. 
However, you notice that um, something has happened or you introduced the wrong change. What you could do is actually you can check out um, the uh, change or changes to a file to a previous state where things have been working and then commit to, the, to the, that specific file. And there's a, there's a, there's a specific exercise where you can um, uh, experience this, where uh, you can introduce in your, in your uh, ingredients and instructions, some, ingre some new ingredients, make some changes and add those changes, see the status, see the difference between um, diff and get diff stage. And of course, experience some of these commands, check out and, um, and diff and diff staged. So at this point, we can start doing an exercise. So we're back to the main room. Um, where I heard there were some interesting discussions in the, where there was one interesting discussion in, the, in, the, in the one of the rooms. Is this something that is worth sharing to the whole, uh, the whole audience? I don't know who was there. So I don't know whether it was our room, but the question was, uh, if you accidentally do, do a git checkout on a file, so you want to undo modifications with git checkout, but what if they were accidental? Can you recover from them? And the answer was that in this case, you cannot. I think it's the one of the very few commands that I cannot recover from. Uh, any other command, so if I staged or committed, I can always recover from that. Even I can even recover from reset, but not from checkout. That is true, yeah. So, thank you, another one. Uh, that's, uh, that's an actually very good point. So, so far, uh, I've seen some of your questions and comments. Uh, what does, uh, there were some interesting uh, comments regarding uh, what's the difference between git rm and uh, mv, um, or git remove and move. So one of the thing is, moves a file, the other one removes the one that has been staged. Um, um, there were some comments about the minus P, which means patch in our case, but at always you can also see the, the help by using the help option. So if we go into the command, you don't need to type along now, you just do git help um, uh, add. And you can, you can look into the specifics of a particular um, flag, which is, for example, in our case, what was minus P and patch. Interact, interactly choose chunks of patch between the index looking tree, what to, to do. Um, this is useful, for example, if you only want to commit specific changes in the file and you want to group them individually uh, for that file. And there's particular parts in, in the lesson that um, point to this. For example, this interactive commit section here will tell you um, when you're doing interactive commit, you, you can specify why use this change and skip this change as split, queue aborts everything and question mark for more options. And of course, this minus p command or this minus p flag is available for also for commit checkout reset and add. So, this is some sort of interactively uh, working from the command line with Git kind of option. If you're trying to do specific changes and address specific changes, you can do this by um, using these particular um, flags or references. Um, so reiterating to this lesson's um, contents, the staging area acts like a mechanism for us to prepare some of the, com some of the changes we're planning to commit or add or stage uh, to our, uh, or work with in our repository and to track those changes. Uh, of course, the most some of the changes we might end up doing wrong, and we'll see in the next stage how we can undo them. 
but the staging area viewed as a preparation point before we actually commit something. And it's good for you to exercise with the staging area because, for example, you might end up um, doing a lot of changes related to a particular feature or commit and then uh, working to uh, working to, um, towards committing them in a single commit so that you be nicely grouped together. And it's also good practice for managing uh, commits or commit structure and how you structure your commit. Um, it also, break, uh, it also boils down to answering this question, uh, how, many ch how small of the changes you can make to a commit, because you can make, it, make them as granular as possible. However, uh, having a commit per each change might not be ideal because you'd end up with a pretty big history that is still not ideal for browsing and working with. So, and we saw one of the problems that can occur in the uh, version controls uh, or in the staging area that sometimes we don't get, uh, sometimes we make some changes uh, that we cannot, uh, we need to undo uh, or we want to undo and, or we revert some changes that we didn't want to revert and we lose them forever. That's the problem because in the staging area, if we lose some changes, we might lose them forever. And of course, the key point to get is help us well do well-defined commits. This is an exercise area. Okay. Um, now I made some changes. I made some, uh, I wouldn't call them boo-boos, but I made some mistakes to, uh, in, the, in the previous commit. So instead of one, two close of garlic, uh, I should have mentioned the commit I made uh, I only mentioned one clover garlic, which is not uh, ideal for um, for us, or not. It is not an ideal commit message, and we need to. I need to be more specific, and actually, I need to change that commit. Then, how do I go about doing this? Well, Git fortunately uh, has the utility belt to help us with this, and it has specific commands that can help you. Um, revert, amend, or reset uh, the changes that we have made. Um, let's try by uh, one of the things that one of that was asked was actually uh, on doing some writes and changes or on commits. And why is this ideal? Um, or why would we, we want to do this? Because sometimes we want to clean some of the area we have. So we want to have a clean file, we made some changes that we don't want. So that uh, so this means we need to revert to a stage uh, that we knew it was working, even though if that means uh, losing some of the changes we made so far, we might want to reset a specific file because something happened that changed our file or uh, we made too many changes that don't make sense and we want to reset those files to something we committed previously and so on and so forth. So it all for maintaining a clean uh, workspace. Um, let's start by doing some of uh, amending one of the commits. So we're going to try one of them, these means of recovering or undoing some of the things we, uh, we made, we made, some of the mistakes we made. And for this, you just need to watch or you can type along um, if you made one of the commits. Uh, wrongly. So I'm going to clean again. So I'm going to press Control L to clean. I'm going to see the status of my current repository because it seems that I committed everything. And I want to also see the log. So git log. So there's still that commit message there which is done wrongly. How do I go about fixing this? I press Q to exit this, and I use one of those commands, which is git commit minus minus amend. And this will bring me the editor up. And it will bring me the last message that I have, um, or the last commit that I made, 
and the and the uh, what I made in that description or description or the changes I made in the description of that comment. And I'm going to press I to interact with it. And I'm going to change one to two. I'm going to press Escape, then number uh, and column and WQ to save. And what does this did this do? So let's check. So Git log. What this happened? So it changed the message without changing too much of no, too much of the history. So it still maintained the three commits I had previously. However, uh, it changed the commit message. For those that, that spotted, did it change anything else besides the besides the uh, besides the commit message? Sometimes, uh, depending on the changes you make, it might change also the commit hash, because that's 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 relevant. That commit hash, as I mentioned previously, it's relevant to a specific commit. If you, what would have happened if the commit hash would have stayed the same? It would have meant that it is the same commit with the same message, with the same changes. But because I changed the commit message it also needed to change the commit hash. These two are in, are need to be in sync because they point to different, different histories. They point to different, different changes. That's one of the change that Git makes. It is that smart, even though it might make sense to keep the same hash. In overall Git, in Git uh, it doesn't because hashes are tied to a commit and their commit message are changes. Okay, um, let's see a few a few more um, changes, and I that we can make to this uh, to undo some of the things that we made. So, revert. What does revert do? So, I do. Someone doesn't like garlic from from uh, from my team, and he doesn't like the fact that I added garlic. And he doesn't want to remove the command, the commit completely. Uh, he just wants to revert the changes of adding garlic to the rest, to the, to the ingredients. So what would he or she do? Well, they will take um, the commit. So that is in question, which is the commit with adding garlic and it would revert it. First, let's do, let's get the commit hash. So we're gonna do git one line, git log, one line and let's type correctly. So it's git log minus minus one line. And I'm gonna take this, copying it, Q to exit. Then I'm gonna write git revert and then paste this. Then it will point me to uh, write uh, the message for this. So revert add garlic to greens and I agree with this. I don't press, I don't add anything, or I could just add a small message. Let's say garlic. And I'm gonna column WQ to insert. And what do you think the the git log would look now? So let's let's see. Git log. As I said, this, uh, the, the newest commit is first. So it added a new commit to the history, which is 56FE, this one. It's one at the top. That says in this message, revert add garlic to the greens. And it says this reverts this particular commit, which is the one below it. So it kept history. It kept, it kept the tracking of, the, of what has been reverted from that particular change. Um, so let's see what that, that implies. So um, in that, so let's see the details of that commit. So let's take the commit hash again, Git log one line. So I'm gonna take this one, copying it, Q to exit. So I'm gonna do, how do I show the, 
what has happened in that commit on using git show. Git show shows what happened in that commit. So I'm gonna rebuild git show and paste that commit and see what happened. So what has happened there? So, sorry about the notifications. I apparently forgot to close my email notifications. Um, so what happened in that commit, which reverted the changes of adding two cloves of garlic and chopping garlic to that, to that commit, to that, uh, from that, uh, so it reverted it. Um, the changes that I made in the previous commit and I can compare this because I know this, uh, Git knows that what was added in the previous commit and it knows what to take using Git, it knows what to take out using Git revert, indifferent of the number of files it uses. I'm gonna press Q to exit this and we can show what has happened in this commit. So Git show and then paste this commit message. So based on the changes that you know, Git knows that happened, it reverted this particular commit. So these are two options that you can revert some of the commits. Of course, there's a way to also reset some of the, uh, some of the changes you made in the staging area. And that is, uh, that is done using Git reset. So let's make a stage, uh, change in the staging area and see how that uh, that's affects it. So I'm gonna do Git. Um, now I'm gonna first add something. So Vim instructions. So I'm gonna insert, press I to insert. Then at the end, I'm gonna add enjoy. Uh, my bad. Escape column WQ to save. And I'm gonna see the status. So there's something that has been added and not staged yet. Let's stage it, let's stage it. So let's git add instructions. That take, I'm gonna press tab to autocomplete. So instructions.txt. Then git status again. And that file has been added. Now, if I don't like what has been done here, actually git even tells me if it don't like what has been staged here, you can use git reset. So I'm gonna use git reset. And I can even name it the file, tab to autocomplete and name the file to reset. What do you think this did? Well, as I said, staging is like a preparation area. So it took the, st the changes that I'm already staged and it took them out of the staging area. So if I do git status again here, you would you see what you expect. You will see the changes are not staged yet for the commit. Yeah. yeah about 20 minutes to, to the, towards the end. Um, we already went to part of these, uh, to these exercises. We already went with the uh, revert and one line and git show. So we don't need to do these exercises. I'm gonna leave the rest of the minutes to uh, maybe for some questions and answers and addressing some of your questions. So we'll leave it an open discussion. Um, but one thing to notice before, um, before we go any further, you might see in some of our lessons these optional things because some of the things are, um, lessons are tightly packed. We don't address them all. Um, and we might leave them to, for you to explore at home or at your own pace, at your own convenience. And that's, you might see also some of the uh, things we might choose to do. Like I chose to do git commit amend, which I think it's really important to amending a uh, previous commit because you might do uh, mistakes. I do a lot of typos in my commits. So I might want to change them and modify the previous comment I made or and address some of the typos I made. Of course, you can also reset to specific comments. This is uh, a hard which uh, comment which uh, actually 
destroys uh, some of the history um, and we will not do but I strongly encourage to explore in your own, in your own local environment to see what the what this does um, and of course some of the tests you could uh, also take at your own pace now we have about 20 minutes left um, of this uh, of this today's workshop I'm going to open up for questions and answers and any other things that people might ask. Or we can go over the things that have been written in the hackpad. Is that okay? Okay, I see no. Are there any questions in the chat that we need to address? One question which might be interesting to many people is what is head exactly? That's a good point. Uh, what is head? Um, I think this, this trans, trans, translates a bit into the tomorrow's lesson with the branches. Do you think we should go a bit into it and or not? Uh, yeah, I think it makes sense to go to it when we go to branches. Okay, so we're gonna leave it for tomorrow. Yeah. Another thing with many questions is about checkout versus reset. But I think we're answering that in the hack MD and for time purposes, maybe it's best to go on. Um, I can also show it if it's, if it's um, yeah. so we already made this instructions.txt and we can check some of the differences that have been made here and the changes is git enjoy what would happen if i do git check out instructions.txt let's see now let's i checked out now let's do git status there's nothing there what git checkout did, it checked out the previous version, uh, previous staged or tracked version of the instructions.txt file into the current file, meaning any changes that have not been staged or committed might have been lost. Let's do a, let's do a change and stage it and see what happens there. And I'm gonna vim instructions.txt press I to insert again and I'm gonna enjoy it again this time I don't forget to escape column and WQ to save then I'm gonna add this git add instructions.txt now let's do git checkout again uh, let's check let's check the status first as I said always check the status I know I'm doing it stuff correctly, but never at least, never at least we should be sure of it. So this file has been staged. Now let's do a checkout. Instructions, and because I'm lazy, I will instructions.txt. Let's see what happened. Status. The change has not been, uh, the changes that have been staged have not been overwritten because these are stage changes. Has this answered the question in the same manner, Richard? I think so. Um, any other questions we need answering? Let's go over some of them. I could see you, there's. Could you do a diff, uh, Stefan? Oh, yes, I can do a diff. Um, get diff. One is minus because it's staged. Yes, the stage, the stage changes is still here. Yeah, but in your working directory. 
What's, what do you have there? Which version do you have there? In my what? Sorry, come again. Yeah, the, you have two versions, right? In the index, which you showed, and then in your working directory. Did it, did it check out to your working directory or it did it do nothing? Let's see. Um, I think it checked out to my working directory. So I can do git checkout again. Uh, and it's still the same. Let's see. Um, if I do minus F, what does it just do? I'm using the force. Let's see what this happens. Still the same. Was there a specific thing to this? Yeah, but but the but in the stage area, you, you compare the stage area with the what's what you have checked in. So if you can compare the what you have the actual file with Okay, you're right. So let's see in the actual file. So let's open the actual file. Your instructions. It's still enjoy. Okay, so there's no checkout, right? Yeah, there's no checkout, yeah. No. Uh, so Steven, you, you showed uh, two methods. Um, if, you, if you commit something and you regret it later, uh, yes. So you clearly showed uh, two uh, two ways to do it, uh, but can you comment something about when you work with others and collaborators? What would be a best way to change it? Is it to uh, uh, amend your change or to commit another change uh, on top of it, making the change? Like, uh, would you recommend changing the hash or having a new commit instead? Um, depends on the workflow. So if that person already has the changes in the repository, I recommend for ease of work, I recommend doing a different commit. If that, because it will be um, easier to do that, because otherwise you will create problems when that person tries to get that commit, uh, tries to get that commit in their changes because history has changed. That means they need to do an additional commit to merge the changes in their repository. Um, but if they haven't had the the commit already in their in the repository, I think amending on your side it's easier than before uh, pushing the changes to your colleague or not. Pushing changes to your colleague, yes. Does this answer the question, or you're thinking of something else? Um, yeah, it, it's it's more more or less. Uh, I'm, um, uh, yes, you did answer the question. I, I want to raise that a little bit because when we work on the collaboration side later on, what you mm. said would be very important. Yeah, so <clears throat> it, it depends on the collaboration. So what we show today is think of it, you're working in your own, at your own pace in your own environment, in your own environment. You're the sole collaborator or the sole author of that repository. Uh, once you start collaborating with others, this workflow that we presented today starts to get a bit more complicated. Uh, these amends and reverts and resets and um, might make life difficult in a collaborative environment. So it's at best, and we will discuss this in the collaborative lesson of Git, to establish a workflow, a stepwise workflow with your colleagues because otherwise you run into the same troubles uh, that uh, Radovan was discussing at the, at the beginning, like wait for me to push my changes, wait for me to do the changes, then you can make your changes, then uh, so on and so forth. So it's, you run into the same issues and you're trying to avoid this and get, tries to solve this. And this is where uh, branching comes into it. and Anna is gonna talk about it tomorrow. Um, and we're going to see what that head means and uh, what it points to and why is it relevant to this repository uh, or to, the, to, to get you might want to, to, uh, 
see how you can do better commits and better improve so that you can collaborate on this on a specific repository because GitHub itself it's a nice tool to use just for your for your sake making changes to your manuscripts making changes to your um, documentation it's a nice tracking tool um, however if it's best at use in a collaborative environment this is what we're working towards in the next lessons yes uh, another interesting would be thing would be like when you um, when you talked about good commit messages uh, you mm -hmm. had a title and you had a space uh, a blank line and then you had a description yes where, pe where people could uh, just uh, use the one line uh, and see only the heading or go for more details mm -hmm. um, and they, interestingly you didn't add your name or date or any, anything as such uh, in those, so because Git already uh, provide that information. So, uh, so in your example, you you showed you know what 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 is uh, useful to add, and you didn't add your name or you know yes. that sort of thing. Yeah. As we saw, yes, that's a good point, Sabri. Thank you for reminding me this. So, as we saw in the Git log, so what actually um, Sabri is referring to is the author and the date already registered by Git. You don't need to add them in the commit message. There's no, there's no point to it. It will be redundant information. What is important is the changes you made, the one liner that says what has happened to that particular commit and maybe some explanation. There are multiple uh, resources how to write good commits. Ideally, if I remember correctly, the one liner should be about 80 characters or, or such. Um, and what comes after could be just text, I saw commit messages that are half, half, a, half a page long describing what has happened. So, yeah. But thank you for reminding me this. Yeah, that's a good point. Any other things we need to address? So I would like to give a short comment um, because we have seen we have discussed staging area and undoing and regrets. Mm -hmm. And I think just as a take home, because it can be a bit overwhelming, lots of new commands. I think one of the biggest regrets should be that if we don't have any version control, so, so that we take home, all we needed to do is we stepped in, we did a git init, and then we started adding and started committing. And of course we can still discuss what should be committed, what should not be committed, but in doubt, commit, 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 too many commits is better than too few. You can always, uh, because we talked about like the clean uh, commit messages, but we can always clean them up later. We can combine them later. Too many is better than too few. And, and tracking is better than not tracking. And it, it's with very few commands we can already get and uh, get our work tracked. And we should also again remind ourselves that everything that we did today only exists on our computer. So there is this .git folder, and if I delete it, then I lose the history. And tomorrow we will learn how to how to share that and how, how we can back it up to GitHub and how we can share it with others. Because all we did so far, if you do ls minus la, everything is in that .git there. So let's actually do it. Let's actually be destructive for once. Yeah, or maybe rename it. Or, or maybe more safe thing is to rename the .git it. into something else. Move .git to... Yeah, and then try git status. Okay, uh, git status. This is not a git repository. This is what it tells me because if ls minus l again, it doesn't find it dot git. Yeah. But and now we need it back and we, we get everything back. So, but, so everything we did today is in that, in that folder. Now, and now if I do git status, and git log, the history stays the same. So if you lose that, you basically lose history. Um, sometimes it's good to clean, but don't be too uh, obsessive about the cleaning. Uh, as Radovan has pointed out, bet more commits equals uh, better. It's better at first. You would learn with time how, what is good and what's not for you and for the collaborators you're working with. It's at best easier to track 
everything first than to track nothing at all. So there was a question on the hacker pad about uh, distributed version control. Mm. So this is, this is, you have your copy. So mm. this is one, uh, one aspect of distributed version control. So every, every, everybody has their own copy of the, uh, the entire repo. Yeah. Then I see a comment here. Does commit messages pick up markdown formatting? I don't think commit messages picked up markdown formatting, but I think tools such as GitLab and Git Hub do pick up on that formatting, if I remember correctly. Um, there's also no, but if you use GitHub, you can see a few formatting options. Yes, that's true. So I see the answer below. What happens if you add one change, one new change, not stage and check out? If you check out without uh, staging, you lose all the changes. Well, if you check out that file, you lose all the changes. Yeah, I think I showed this. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. We have about four minutes left. Uh, we tried to be a bit, I tried to be a bit slower at first because uh, we saw a lot of people that uh, this is the first time for Git. So uh, hopefully the pace, is, well, pace was okay with this. Uh, I would rather give more time for questions and answers because we are trying to be as interactive as possible. Any other things we need to address? Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again so in order to know what to expect tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning, um, I'm gonna to go to the Git introduction. So far today we have done motivation, basics, using Git staging area and undoing things. Tomorrow morning or tomorrow, uh, Anne is gonna do the rest as rather one pointed out and starting with branching and merging. Yeah, and then conflict resolution, um, some of the things that Sabri pointed out, the sharing repositories online and inspecting history. So something more detailed than just git log in one line or git log. Yeah. So this is it for today. And this is all from my part. I leave it to you, Richard and Noe. Yeah.